Greetings from Ventura, California. I thought I'd add some thoughts to this 52nd anniversary celebration of Sky River Rock Festival and Lighter Than Air Fair. My name is Dorothy Chambliss, one of the individuals involved in the two Sky River Rock Festivals and Lighter Than Air Fairs, 1968 and 1969. Music brought us together in 1968 at a time full of chaos, hope, and love. It took place a little over 20 years after a devastating world war. The youth born before and after that time were in their prime. We all felt as if we were on the precipice of making great strides for a new world, a new beginning, acknowledging the responsibilities of what it took to be a caring human being took the center stage. The arts, religion, civil rights, science and technology were all part of the political discussion on the street, the discussion of the times. There was a power rising from this middle class, more educated, more informed, bolder in what we saw were injustices. Sky River Rock Festival and Lighter Than Air Fair came out of a desire to be part of this movement, to make a statement of support for a better world. It was a global desire, much like today, a spark that motivated and crossed generational lines. Sky River Rock Festival and Lighter Than Air Fair brought together a diverse gathering of individuals, economically, racially, spiritually, culturally, artistically, all pooling their resources, imagination, and talents, birthing the first outdoor music festival in the nation. One of the main characters of the festival and fair was my husband, John Chambliss, a very enigmatic and charismatic individual, philosopher, professor, music and arts director, DJ, journalist, naturalist, political activist, poet, lover of the arts, and humorist, sarcastic humorist, were some of the talents he contributed to the pool of resources. Of his many passions, music played an important part, from classical to jazz, rhythm and blues, folk, country, East Indian, an eclectic fusion of genres. That's what he hoped to bring to the festival, the dialogue and sound of the times. It was a time much like today, where music brings us together amidst chaos, love, and hope. These are different times in many ways, but we still strive to be carry on the ideals of that time, and we still look to our youth to take the stage. They are asking the same questions, striving for the same justices, and once again we leave the question of what it is to be human, to be civilized, to them. We have come full circle again. Voices of the past remind us in the words of Chief Seattle that we do not inherit our earth from our ancestors, we borrow it from our children and Maria Montessori, whose life, life work with children. The child is the father of the man. These voices are alive today. It is time to caress these times with music, to bring solace to the weary soul and spirit, to remember who we are and what we can accomplish. Namaste. <laughs> Sky River Rock. Music is powerful. It's able to change the world. It can lift our spirits. It can give us hope and comfort. It can be our creative outlet. And I can testify that making music with your friends is one of the greatest feelings you can have. I'm a member of Seattle Totally Relaxed Ukulele Musicians, Strum, and we opened the 50th anniversary Sky River Festival concert in 2018 and again in 2019. Those gigs were musical high points in my life. Greetings. I'm Steve Noy, the son of Cyrus Noy, the general manager of the original Sky River Rock Festival. In 1968, my dad, with John Chambliss and the folks who published the underground newspaper, The Helix, had a dream, a three-day outdoor musical festival. At the time, it was a pretty big dream. Nobody had done a festival like this before. They managed to pull it off, and now, all these years later, we marvel at the lineup of bands, some of which are still performing. Santana, Grateful Dead, It's a Beautiful Day, The Youngbloods, Big Mama Thornton, Country Joe and the Fish, 
Allman Brothers, and many others. The organizing happened rapidly. $40,000 in seed money was raised when John and Cyrus took out second mortgages on their homes. John lined up the bands. The site was found in Sultan. Posters were created. The dream came together. A few years ago, somebody else had a dream. Jill Hatcher used her considerable skill set to put in motion all the elements to revive the Sky River Rock Festival in time for the 50th anniversary. Another miracle. August 25, 2018, the 50th anniversary show happened at Willis Tucker Park, and it rocked into the night. John and Cyrus both passed not long before the 50th anniversary, but I'm sure that both would be pleased to see that the musical gathering that they started continues. Jill is a dreamer. Dreamers make cool things happen, and now it's about to happen again. Legacy, from the musical Hamilton. What is a legacy? It's planting seeds in a garden you never get to see. Cyrus, John, and the others planted those seeds long ago, and the garden is thriving. Maybe in 2068, Jill's son Emmett will be organizing the Sky River Rock 100th anniversary concert. Big dreams, rock on. Here's a quote from my dad. Here are some of my remembrances of Sky River. My name is Cyrus Noy of Seattle, and I was Sky River's general manager. John Chambliss was the festival director in charge of musical matters. I worked with the local community and the sheriff's department. As noted in the Seattle Times story, Roger Downey was my unlikely head of security. Some security staff, alas, had work difficulties on the account of being under the influence of LSD. I was worried about drug matters and with a large assistant prowled the audience area telling drug peddlers they could work, but I wanted them to remove the large poster, Dope for Sale. Drugs, as it turned out, were not a problem at Sky River. Sultan Town folk and law enforcement people were most helpful. I changed roles as the time to end what in its final hours was purely delightful. I took over as MC and chose It's a Beautiful Day Band to play the final set and end the show. And as I told the crowd, this indeed was a beautiful day. This has become a, our little anthem here over the years, and of course I know you all know what it is. messages and the music still still work today. I think it's really timeless and uh, I think the fact that we see the next generation listening to the music and them playing that to their kids, uh, it's, it's got legs. The white 
dreams of the aspen tree With his dying leaves Turning gold Oh, 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 oh But the white bird Just sits in her cage Growing old Sunsets go and the clouds blow by and the ocean slow and the young birds die to always grow. She must fly. I always had a nickel for every time I've heard, uh, you know, my, our kid was conceived a white bird. You know, I mean, that hundreds of times, you know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a true story. Yeah. No matter what happens now to me and my life, it has a completeness to it. Sure, I'd like to shoot golf in the 70s, but I'm in my 70s now and it's not going to happen. And the sunsets come and the sunsets go and the clouds float by and the earth turns slow and the young bird's eyes do always grow. And uh, that was us. We were a bunch of young birds ready to fly. And still are, but now we're old birds. <laughs> but we're still flying. Let's
Martin jumped the fence in 1968 to get into the Sky River Rock Festival. He was 20 years old and considered himself to be a hippie. Well, when Greg learned that Jill Hatcher was celebrating the Sky River Rock Festival, he decided he wanted to find some of his friends. So he started the Sky River Rock 68 reunion page on Facebook. Recently, I caught up with Greg and we talked about the page and all the people he's met. So take a few moments to listen in on our conversation. Well, uh, about four and a half years ago, I started looking for old friends from the, uh, the late 60s era. The reason was the Facebook had become a, a really uh, a nice place to find old friends, I was noticing. So I thought, hey, I'm going to see if I can find some of my old buddies and girlfriends or whatever. So, and that worked out. I did. So, and then in the, in the process, I saw Jill Hatcher. She intended to hold a rock festival, you know, a reincarnate, reincarnation of the Sky River Rock Festival. So I immediately contacted her because I thought, hey, I went to that. You know, we can uh, meet some friends that way. And looking for old friends and, and discovering things about the history of Sky River. I just got more excited about it. And Jill and I both, we, we kind of fed off one another on that as far as the history angle. And I started contacting uh, some of the old performers. We got more, more and more people interested. So I, I started downloading pictures and, and band biographies and, and the interviews I, you know, over that first year. Uh, well, David LaFlame told me of of it's a beautiful day. He told me that Chief Dan George was there uh, at the festival, even though there's no uh, written record of that. Oh. So I got in contact with his grandson uh, or, or his son, I forget which one. And he told me, yeah, I was only 10 years old then, but my my dad went. So there we had two confirmations that uh, that uh, Chief Dan George was there. And then and when I contacted the, the band Boogie, who played Sky River, once again online, they said, yeah, there was a, an Indian chief who got up and led us on a, on a chant to, to make the rain go away. Oh, that's pretty so cool. So that was kind of cool. It was kind of cool that we, you know, because Chief Dan George was a pretty interesting figure from back in that era. You know, he was more than a movie star. He was a, he was a uh, Indian chief, a Canadian ab- Aboriginal. Let me ask you something. How old were you when, when you were there, right? I was 20 years old. Yeah, I just had turned 20 at Sky River. You didn't have a ticket to get in? Is that what I heard? Yeah, I, I didn't have any money in those days. I was a penniless hippie. You know, we it was so easy to travel around in those days. And you could go to a local food bank 
in each city and, and get free food. So when I got there, I saw there was a, an admission price, and some, some people were jumping the fence. So I just followed them because in those days, I didn't have much of a moral conscience as, as to the fact, <laughs> oh, if I don't pay, you know, I, we didn't, I didn't think that out. Right. A lot of us did, and unfortunately for, for the Chambliss, I got my tent set up early. I had a waterproof tent, and, and I was prepared for it, having been a Boy Scout. And then I met a young lady uh, named April, and we uh, it was love at first sight, or whatever you want to call it. We hung out together during the festival, and we you know we traveled around in the woods and and explored a little bit and, and met other people. So to me, it was more about people being there than you know, as much as the bands. The bands were kind of a back. They're, they're part of the fabric of, of everyday life, you know, because in those days we used to listen to those bands, go to a concert for next to nothing, and they weren't superstars. They were just people like us who happened to play music. Right. We all felt like we were we were all together on, on one level. You know, it was like we were a, a tribe of people, you know, young people. We had all that. We had our music in common. We had the, uh, the whole civil rights movement thing, you know, because the the Sky River Festival was a benefit for blacks and Indians, as they said back then, not Native Americans. The Chambliss had some really noble aspirations as to the money they thought they were going to make that they could give to, to the minority groups, but they didn't make any money, as you know. <laughs> they lost a lot of money. So. Yeah, this was this was before Woodstock, right? I mean, Woodstock hadn't happened. Yeah, one yet. year, ten months before Woodstock. The first, the first, the first multi-day festival, rock festival in the world. So that was kind of cool. Three days, three days long, and so much music. There was, oh man, I forget how many bands, mm-hmm. fifty or sixty plus bands. They played late into the night. I remember Santana playing at three a.m. So it was pretty, pretty cool. Who were these people that organized the Sky River Rock Festival? John and, and Dorothy Chambliss. Uh, he was a professor at the University of Washington, had only been up there about a year. He'd come up from Berkeley, where he helped organize the Berkeley uh, Folk Festivals for a couple of years. So he knew a lot of the bands, and he knew how to to contact those those people. So that was indispensable. I mean, Sky River never could have happened without, without his uh, personal contact with those bands. And not to mention the fact that he and... Uh, he and his wife and Steve No and his wife Billy, they paid for the whole thing. You know, they they uh, refinanced their homes so they could uh, so they could do the deal. Wow! And get the money to to uh, to fly the bands up. Wow! So it was pretty cool. And and you got jumped the fence. No. <laughs> yeah, and I, I jumped the fence. I, I said, and the funny thing is, I, I I finally got a hold of, or actually, it was Jill who got a hold of uh, Dorothy Chambliss. He got a hold of uh, Lisa Wolf, her her daughter, first, and then Lisa Wolf got us got us in contact with Dorothy. And she almost came to the festival last year, but she's 82 years old, so her son decided she couldn't she oh. couldn't make it. When did John pass away? Yeah, John had passed away just just that summer that that spring or summer that I first got in t- contact with Jill, and uh, it was too bad we missed we missed that. You know, he was older; he was 10 years older than the rest of us at that time. Young professor. So it was incredibly altruistic and idealistic of him and his wife, yeah. Cyrus Snow and Billy No. It was so altruistic of them to do that. I mean, can you imagine hawking your homes just, just to throw this festival, which was because they really believed in it. You know, as, as John said, he, he really believed in the, in the young people's music and they, they needed a venue to come together to express that. So it, it still blows my mind that, that they had the, uh, the courage and the selflessness to do that because it was a real special event. Who are a few more of the interesting people that you've met? The Flames of, of the uh, It's a Beautiful Day, Pete Larson of Easy Chair, the whole boogie band. I can't think of it. John Oxendine and, and those guys. Oh, and then last year you guys had the Climax Blues Band come out to play. And so, yeah, I, I contacted him, got them interested. So I'm glad that happened, even though I couldn't be there. Okay, and another one was uh, Don Bono of uh, Juggernaut. So he still plays. He lives in in Hawaii, and he's got a band. Yeah, and then uh, another fellow that showed up last year was uh, Volker Volker, who worked at the Sky River, the original Sky River, in a concession stand. 
after Sky River, that inspired him to become a musician. So he became a folk musician. So we get, you know, we get to meet quite a few people. And I'd say there's been about a couple of dozen people in the last four years that have come to the festivals who were at the original. So we get to meet those folks and hear their stories. And it's it's kind of neat. Yeah, the La Flames came forward and said, hey, you can you can play this music if you could like. Uh, you know, or Byron Pope sent me a song too and uh, I gave that to Jill that you won't find on uh, YouTube. Oh, okay. So we've had folks like that, a, f- a few of them come out and, and say, yeah, you can play. We're glad to, to have you play a song. Right. But it'd be nice if some more, if some more of them came out, more people came out, that would be really great. Yeah, if they're still around, huh? <laughs> yeah, you never know. You know, it's getting times times going on, that's for sure. But what what is your Facebook page where you have all this stuff posted? Yeah, that's called Sky River Rock Festival 68 Reunion. Okay. That's the name I gave it originally. I thought, hmm, well, that, that'll that say it plain and clear. We're out. I'm out to contact people who who were at the original, yeah, or people who are just interested. And one, I think one reason it's grown and that people follow us is that I only put things, I only post things that are relevant to, to Sky River. Right. Uh, you know, the pe- people I've met and, or the conversations I've had, you know, with like with the various artists. So you've been given permission so, to post photos. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. And I've always gone to yeah, all the photos I've uh, I found online, I've, I've tried to go to uh, to the owners and, and get permission. Right. Um, and my my excerpts from David Crowley's book, I went and got permission from the University of Washington Press, you know, got the intellectual property to, to do that. You know, and I messaged with Sean Crowley, uh, his son. So I've, I've always tried to cover and be professional about it. And then I saw that you have YouTube. You do have the YouTube links to songs. I saw that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I yeah I, I put up a YouTube song list. It's called Sky River, Greg Garten. And I got about, oh, 55 songs or so there of the bands from I've tried to pick the songs right right from that that year so you get a good sense of it yeah I think it's it's kind of it's kind of authentic that way and I was surprised when I went searching for this music uh, even though you can find it on YouTube there was, it's like the Santana recording I have on there I have a, a couple of them they had made a recording just a few months before Sky River uh-huh. it's really rough it was before Carlos began singing and it was before they actually had a song structure. They got whipped into shape really quick that year. <laughs> but we, we got we got to hear the rough version. Yeah, well, everybody's got to start some of, somewhere, right? Everybody's got to start somewhere. Yeah, they were all they were all young people, and they sounded like it. The same <laughs> with the Billy Roberts, who was the guy who did the Hey Joe, Chet Powers. Uh, he had another name. Do you know Valenti? Yeah, he was. His his recording from that year was sounded really really rough. Like it sounded like he just picked up a folk guitar a month before and was was singing in a coffee house or something. So, <laughs> what made this be a real challenge was this was in a field out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that brings up the fact that the Chambliss's were were lucky enough to find uh, Betty Nelson. It was great. We we all had a great time. There was no violence. Uh, nobody bullying anybody. Um, there wasn't any overdoses that that I knew of, or or Dorothy, or Steve No, who, who was there. He was, I think, 11 years old. Now, Steve No is the the one who had the uh, banjo, the uh, ukulele band, yes. the last couple of years. Yes. At Sky River. Yeah, and his his dad was one of the founders. So, you know, so it was kind of kind of cool to have him. Uh, another person I met was was Brad Brad Dahlquist, who you guys met the last couple of years. Now he was he was the really knowledgeable guy about Sky River discography. He'd been doing it for a long time before I I got into it four years ago. Oh, okay. So he he helped uh, anything any of the notes the footnotes I've got on the albums like on the Sky River playlist. Just a lot of that input is from him. That is great. Yeah, so I'm lucky to meet all those folks. I wish we could all be there, but yeah, don't we all? We can't. I really enjoy talking to you and sharing Thank your you. information. And Thank you, Ruth. It was, it was great talking to you, too. So thanks, Greg, for your time today. And what's your, what's your grandson's name? Oh, yeah, that's, that's Teddy. Okay, so Teddy's part of history now. Well, hey, it's Normal Bean here. 
I'd like to welcome you all out to the Sky River Rock Festival. Once again, we're going to be tearing up the stage and having a great old time. Um, so all you Universal Love Family people, we'll see you out there. All you counterculture people, you merry pranksters, you brotherhood of love, doesn't matter what clique you are, we'll see you out there. Peace. When you write a song about freaks, they just come out from the woodworks everywhere. They chase you down the road at the airports. They show up everywhere. But you know I love them all. <laughs> so here you go, little freak song.
or a bus to Hollywood. I met a man, said he'd take a pictures of me, and I just call a bus to another place, to another place. I get on up, I get on up. Well, I made it to a lady without any care of fare. Sold my soul in a while for a ticket far from me to another place. To another place. I get on up. I get on up. I get on up. Put your hands together now. Get on up. Put your hands together now. Get on up. Put your hands together now, na 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 na, yeah, na 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 na, yeah, na 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 na, yeah, yeah. Well, I made it to LA, but I didn't care if I fell. Sold my soul to a wife for a ticket far from bed to another place. small stage, so I gotta be careful. I get all crazy and start running around up here and lose my way. But I'm gonna try to weave through it. Here we go. Follow me.
just had to get that out of my system. You feel me? Come on, feel me. She's a freak. You're never too old to be a freak. Don't even, don't even be shy. All right. Ah, uh, freak out. No freak, so she. Freak out! Yeah, let's 
Jill's on. Is that working? Yeah, we're on. Hey, everybody. Hi, everybody. We hope you enjoyed the first 59 minutes <laughs> of the show, right? That was great. 59 Thank minutes. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Very lovely. We are right now. We're taking a break. You got 20 minutes. Well, 8.20, we resume. So, so stretch, <laughs> run around, get some food. Get Come some, back. Yep. Get some food. And we have quite a lineup for you. Oh, yeah. It's getting, it's going to be really exciting. We're not going to reveal. Surprises. No revealing yet. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no. You have to come back. So you have to come back. And the next set is 44 minutes and 39 seconds. Perfect. Perfect. Just long enough. And then we'll have a third set. So we'll be ending a little bit after 10. And there's a great little slideshow review at the very end. Yes. So stay tuned yes. for all the different things that have happened. Can you see it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm in mine, but I'm not in hers. Say hi. Send hey. Us all right. Send we'll us messages. Okay. We'll set. Yeah. And you guys Thank set you guys. up watch party too. Okay. Yeah. Love you all. Share, share. Bye. We'll see you in 20 minutes. Come back to the Facebook page that you were on. Here's a band for the day. Corky, Michael, Greg, and myself. We all volunteer at the Tim Noah Thumbnail Theater in Snohomish, Washington. You know, during these times, we really need each other. So here's Lean On Me.
the blues feedback. We got to admit it. Yeah, we are the blues feedback. We are the blues feedback. I'm Daryl. What? I'm Mark. He's Daryl. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Ernie? Oh, yeah, that, that would be me. <laughs> oh, this is actually, this, a couple of the tunes you're going to watch are, are the blues feedback reunion when we first got back together after how many years was it 40 40 years god we're old. i want to say thank you to jill for the festival thanks jill and if we want to go back in history we want to thank john chambliss for starting sky river anyways thank you jill yeah thanks to jill and enjoy the tunes <laughs> Thank you. 
that don't like me. Well, we stay away from each other. That's the way you're gonna be. In the summer of 1968, Volkert Volkers, otherwise known as Kurt, worked the concession stand at the Sky River Rock Festival in exchange for admission to the event. Here's Volkert's performing Universal Soldier, written by Buffy St. Marie and made popular by Donovan. He's five foot two, and he's six feet four. He fights with missiles and with spears. He's all of 31, and he's only 17. He's been a soldier for a thousand years. He's a Catholic, a Hindu, an atheist, a Jain, a Buddhist, and a Baptist, and a Jew. And he knows he shouldn't kill. And he knows he always will Kill you for me, my friend And me for you He's fighting for Canada He's fighting for France He's fighting for the USA He's fighting for the Russians And he's fighting for Japan And he thinks we'll put an end to war this way He's fighting for democracy He's fighting for the Reds he says it's for the peace of all. He's the one who must decide who's to live and who's to die. And he never sees the writing on the wall. But without him, how would Hitler have condemned him at the hall? Without him, Caesar would have stood alone. He's the one who gives his body as a weapon of the war. And without him, all this killing can't go on. He's the universal soldier and he really is to blame. His orders come from far away and no more. They come from him and you and me. And brothers, can't you see? This is not the way to put the end to war. Hi, I'm Alexis. And I'm Travis. And we like, and we to, like burn to burn things. things. Thank you. 
called a bent chord. It's a beautiful chord. It's, it, it's an F sharp major minor, right? Yeah. Did you like that? Oh, I think it's kind of funny. We're going to do a double shot of Ozzy! much for having us. Thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting live music right here in Washington.
Happy Father's Day. Just a game we play You'd hold my hand And try to show me All the things he couldn't say And time went on In his eyes I saw took my hand on that road he showed me all the things he was to me he said you don't have to cry for me I will be okay and you don't have to lie for me I'm the one who Was Hello. that the coolest set ever? Oh We've got some talented God. people. Thank you so much, everybody. Oh my God. It was, that was just great. 
I oh. can't even tell you. Thank you. Thank oh. you. Thank you. Our talented friends. You people are awesome. Yeah. It we're was, having a great time. We're having we're having a really good time. So come back. We, we got another 20 minute break. 20 minutes. Last section. Last set. <laughs> Last set. <laughs> We're getting there. I love you. Oh, okay. Love you too. Um, um, by the way, I couldn't have done this without Karen. She, I'm not she breathing on her. Us. No, okay. we, we were around <laughs> each other too much. It's yeah. Okay. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. We couldn't have done it without our little group. Right. Greg. Yes. Greg Garton. Greg McClellan. Yeah. Me and you. And then and everybody. Assorted... And then everybody who sent in all of their stuff. Oh, that. Yeah. So. And that, oh my after gosh. not being able to do the regular festival, yes, the drive-in festival, yes, and now here we are. And I actually love this. We're having a great time. It's just we're we're just here and we're like chatting on the on the thing with yeah, everybody. Everybody's happy, and, and we just appreciate you all being here and you sharing all of this with everyone. Yeah. So we've got it's a really big blessing. Yeah, it's the community from Sky River. It's like a mix of old and new and what happened on the 50th. And we're so glad that we can share this all with you. Yeah, yeah. All, all of it together. And the, the last young band, Sweet Clarity. Oh. <laughs> Weren't they awesome? Kids. They were. Wow. Blowed yeah. me away. Yeah. So we have another set coming Thank up. You, Anthony. It's oh. going to be about Jill's stories just went out. So now, <laughs> so now it's me. And, uh, the, the next, the next set is about 35, 34 minutes. And it will be happening about mm -hmm. in about 20 minutes. Much, uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I guess we'll just wait. We're not saying anything. All right. We'll so you're going to go quiet. back to. The Facebook page. Brad Simpson's going to be on. <laughs> Angels of Dresden. <laughs> You're going to go to the Facebook page where you've been for Sky River Rock Festival and meet us there and start your watch party or continue your watch party. And I'm going to have a watch party on mine. I'm learning how to do this. Okay. And bear with. Yes. Yes. And I think we're all set for the last last bit. Okay. And so. Then, and then we'll just it, meet yeah. tomorrow and yeah. we'll have all the links and everything yeah. figured out what to do to watch it again. Yes. Yeah, so take so, an intermission or break and then we'll tomorrow, tomorrow or the next day. I can't even tell you, I was up for 24 hours <laughs> putting this together. Greg and Karen <laughs> have been working on this for the last week. Oh my God. So thank you everybody for bringing all the videos yeah. together. And I gathered and I went, I don't know what to do. Yeah. And they took it over and yeah. made this really wonderful yeah. for all of us. All right, so we will see you, you in a little bit. We love you all. Thank yes, you very much, you. and we will see you in 20 minutes. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. The Sky River Rock Festival and Lighter Than Airfare was held over Labor Day weekend, 1968. Amidst a climate of great national unrest, young organizers created the event to promote peace, love, and freedom. One can only imagine a better panacea for our country, given today's volatile climate. Due to the global pandemic, today in 2020, we celebrate the 52nd anniversary of the festival virtually in hopes that next year, we will all join together, hand in hand, to rejoice in another weekend of peace, love, and freedom.
This is Jeff Tarada. The man with the plan, the guy that started this whole thing. His family's back there, his lovely wife Susan and his son Chase and all the other family. On uh, tenor and Barry, this is Scott Matthews. Carl Roning on the trumpet and flugelhorn. And then our trombonist slash bodyguard, Eric Stevens.
We had We're a, a really bit good overwhelmed. Time. I'm just, yeah, it's just been <laughs> How amazing. Cool that was. So we'll get back tomorrow or the with... next day. Jill gets to do the next part. <laughs> I'll be uh, updating everybody with how to get a copy, do downloads, the links, and all that. I'm not quite sure. But right. We'll figure it out. We'll so. figure it out. Yeah. Thanks for watching. So thanks everyone for coming to Sky <laughs> River Rock Festival. Namaste. No.